shirt. Can you see him? We snotted it and just went into the bloody dark of the reeds where the camera wouldn't pick it up. Sorry, so you didn't get to see the shot. Boy took off after the shot and ran over there and throttled it. Bloody mongrel. Just kept it sunny. Tacker. That's good. It'll be easier to drag over. I'm grab his diddle first. And I'll cut along under his diddle. See, I'll put a little slit there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just pull that to the side and get my knife. And get, just try to cut down there without actually bursting his guts. One thing you can do is put your fingers in there and hold his, the guts back away with your fingers. Try not to cut it. Another way is to just put the tip of the knife just in there, so it's only just going through. And now I've gone there, I'm going to spin around. And I'll actually put my hands in there, and I'll see I've made a gap with my fingers. Mm -hmm. Now I know I'm not going to cut the guts. See, my fingers are holding the guts away from the skin. Mm -hmm. you just got to be careful not to cut your fingers when you do this with a knife. So just be worried, really aware of where your knife is. And I'll slowly go up there, go a little bit further, a little bit further. And just up to where his rib cage starts, which is about there. And then I'll roll that out a little bit just to get it out of the way. And now what I want to do, you see how it's still connected here? Mm -hmm. Still connected to his backbone. Yeah, but where's the liver? There's his liver right there. See oh, that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually I want to leave his liver in there. So I'm going to pull that guts just away, but I have to cut the guts is attached. See, it's attached there and here to the liver. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to cut that through just a little bit just to cut it off the liver and then the other bit of the guts because I want to leave the liver in there that's attached to see the liver's attached to the diaphragm which is the flap of muscle see there's that flap of muscle there mm -hmm. that muscle comes all the way you've got one too it stops your heart and lungs from meeting your guts so it's basically a flap of skin see that's it there that goes all the mm -hmm. way across and his liver's attached to that so if I put that knife through there and I just cut that away from where it meets the liver, then I can get the guts out and one hit and leave the liver in there still. See that? Mm -hmm. And then there's just one little flap of skin to cut through. That little bit of grass there is just where his um, throat comes down to meet his guts. And there's his poo tube, so I'll scoop all that poo in towards his guts there. And then I'll cut that off and I'll actually tie that in a knot so none of his poo squeezes back out into the deer. There we go. And I'll just slide all his guts away out of the way there. Now his liver's still attached, and he's got his heart and his lungs in there. I'm going to use this new belt that I've got to carry him out. So I'll hock him. Too. You like that sound, eh? Mm -hmm. A little slip through there. Just because it reminds me of celery. Bone snapping reminds you of celery. Yeah, it reminds me of the sound when I crunch it. The crunch. When I snap it. A little slip through there. Rogues and Royals made me this bout and they've put an extra stud in there to give it a bit more strength. 
and uh, made it extra long so that I can use it as a deer carry bout. And this is the first deer I've had a crack on, so hopefully she goes good. I reckon it will. <laughs> so for those of you fellas and fellesses that aren't familiar with this, it's a real good way to carry deer out. It distributes the weight evenly across your shoulders and most of the weight's on your bum. So my, uh, my back isn't really uncomfortable, I'm not pinching off any blood supply, it's a real good way to carry a deer out. And I'll put the link for this belt below so you can order one if you want. Want to carry my bag Sonny? Oh, your bag, was it? Right here. Right, pop them in there. All good. Sonny, it might be about time for you to shoot a deer, eh? Next time we go out, I'll bring the 223. Mm -hmm. Get some target practice in there tomorrow. <laughs> That'd be another challenge and a half, wouldn't it? Here's your anchor here, buddy. We're on the mission. We are on the mission. It's been raining all day pissing down actually it's just stopped raining now so we're off up the river it's late it's half past six we don't have long to go up set camp go hunting oh man look unreal it's just been pissing down i was quite worried so, oh we're gonna go up the river when it's pissing down and wet and cold and shit here come on inside sunny close the store after you we'll skedaddle Food's packed, everything's packed, ready to go. We're in the trees. I'll put us over and climb up and grab it back. Stay there, Roy. Stay there. Man, this water is beautiful. Haven't seen any fish yet, though. like a pretty good campsite. Spin the boat around and nose us into there, I think. This is our actual parallel park here, like our dad. Epic ads, all right. This is our campsite. Grass is growing really good. I haven't seen any deer sign yet, but that's just luck of the draw whether or not you get deer. Set up, then we'll that have a cup of tea. Brackenay mm. parents.
don't get one. <laughs> they smoke like a bastard, they don't draw. They're so heavy, but they're the only one I can find with a kink in the chimney, that's why I bought it. I didn't realise it was so shit when I bought it. The chimney's too small for the fire, I suspect, and it just smoulders away. You've got to use bone dry wood, and even then it doesn't really draw much. Bit of a design fault. <laughs> And here's some I prepared earlier. Because that odds pig draws so poorly, I cut a whole bunch of bone dry wood at home. Normally, with the fire I built, I'd just come up here and harvest wood off the riverbank because it draws so good, even if it's a bit damp, she burns. But this one, if it's slightly damp wood, it just won't burn in there. And set up some chairs and we'll go for a bit of a fly with the drone too. Check out the clearings, maybe see if there's any prints in the sand. Film some nice trees, shit like that. This is the Big Six camp chair from Big Agnes and it is awesome. If you're not often traveling when you take chairs and they need to be lightweight like boats or helicopters, you probably don't want to get one because they are a bloody arm and leg. Sonny's made a dinosaur fossil out of sand. Oh cool, what kind of dinosaur is it? I have no idea. It's got balls for a tail. No, Dad, those are the fins. Dad. Yeah? Dad, I was thinking it would be a Kronosaurus, but I realised that Kronosaurus, they don't have two fins, they just have one like that, so I'm going to change that. Mm. Yeah. What dinosaur has balls on its tail? Those aren't balls, Dad, they oh. have fins. <laughs> it's pretty hard to make fins out of sand, eh? Imagine finding an actual dinosaur skeleton. We should go hunting for some Megalodon or some shark's teeth, eh? Oh, we're fine, those. This is the big jet boil, can't remember the name of it. But it holds one litre, maybe even 1.5 litres, and it's super grunty. It's got this copper pipe that goes around and heats up and it sucks more gas out, so it's like a little turbocharger. Not a turbocharger, what would you call that? Some kind of thermocline? I don't know what the correct term for that is, but anyway, it's grunty. I was a wee bit worried there wasn't going to be any deer sign up here because we didn't see any on the riverbanks, but... They've been having a little party just out from camp here. Gonna go find some real small coming bits now. Out in the open where it's nice and sunny and lots of airflow, there should be lots of real good dead sanding stuff. Yeah, grab all those little bits too. Gonna be easy to start a fire tonight. Easy as. Yes. We need to get ready to feed some more kindling into this. Stay steady. Focus. Oh, I haven't had venison in so long. I'm so excited. Getting escapey. It's hard to cook these paninis evenly sometimes. Slaving over a hot fire is not good for a man or a woman. Across. I'll, I'll forget a little bit more. 
Hold on. Move up. My pegs will be lost. Mm. Mm. Almost hunting a clock, just waiting for the sun to get to the top of those hills. We heard a couple of gunshots about 10 minutes ago, probably a bit early for a deer, so could have been a couple of lads sighting in their guns. Hopefully not. You know, that's the risk you run when you're hunting these days. There's so many other hunters out there. You're going to run into people. Hopefully not get shot or shoot them. Fingers crossed. I'm a bit concerned about that wind too that's going to change and blow downstream right on dark, which it quite often does. At the moment it's blowing cross. It's going to be going across the clearing. So. Yes. Did you get him? Got him fish. Nice. <laughs> I really want to take Sunny floundering, but we just haven't had the right conditions when he's been with me so far. It's either been too windy or too muddy or hammering down with rain. Hunting time. Stash. Stash. I love hunting. Bloody paradise ducks. We'll try to put them off now. Set up at a corner crossroads. We can see a little bit down there and a little bit down there. It's it's not great for hunting with more than one people because it's real close quarters here. Real close and personal. It's quite good hunting solo along this stretch. There's not massive clearings, just a few little clearings. If you can find an area where there's heaps of bush and just a couple of grassy clearings, it's a real good place to hunt because it concentrates the deer. <laughs> Especially this time of year when the grass has just started to grow. There's all the sugars in it. They've been eating crap from trees all winter. They just want that grass. It's like crack. Come on, dear. Boy keeps winding, so we know there's animals tucked up in the bush down here. All we need now is a deer to walk out right in front of us. Side, just right there. It's not. It's not a great spot. But fingers crossed. <laughs> Bloody paradise ducks is flying and landed right next to us and started squawking. So we're gonna have to move from this nice little shooting alley. Bugger. Bloody berries everywhere. I wouldn't read about it, but you can see it right here. No bloody deer. We even walked around the corner and put the spotlight on the clearings and didn't see one. So they're obviously not on the grass hard out yet. They're just still cruising up and down. You did see a deer, but it was behind the bushes. Oh yeah, true. Well, we knew we didn't see it, but we knew it was there. This is true. Oi, wind at a deer coming in, but it was in the scrub. And we just couldn't see it, so we just kept moving. Should have just waited for that one to come out. It's refreshing and cold. And we just saw a couple of deer in the spotlight right by camp, just across from camp. The spotlight is so grunty, that's a that's a couple of hundred meters. That tree it's lighting up. And it's so small, look how small it is. Just a little the spotlight, it's so grunty but it's so small. Made it!
put that meat in the creek and see if we can get an eel. As soon as I got down there and eel poked his head out of that stuff, he'll come back around when he smells the meat. There'll be a couple more. We need somewhere with some current. There's no current here. We'll just leave that meat for in there eh, and go light the fire. Bugger it. We're just going to go light the fire, have a cup of hot chocolate and go to bed. Any more ollies? You smashed the last one. Oh, you're going hard. What a champion. Thanks, mate. You're welcome. That fire should be roaring and all that's burning still is the rubber. It's just, it doesn't draw is the problem. Got it sorted horse. Oh, Look how much smoke's in this tent from this bloody fire. My goodness. Anybody want to buy an Ospig? Outdoor use only, it does say. For outdoor household use only. Bloody hell. Hi. Hello. Ended up putting the fire outside last night. I was smoking so much. I'm going to have to weld the top on. I think it's because the top just sits on there, so you can take it off and put marshmallows and shit on. That creates a gap all the way around, and the air gets in there instead of getting in a bloody door and creating a good suction, what's the word I'm looking for? Draw. Glad it's not raining today because we'd be waking up cold having to stand in the rain to light the fire. Sam's knife out. Oh, that sweet smell of silver pine in the morning. So good. Oops, sorry. Nice. Happy oil. Frosty last night. Oh, ice. Ice. Oh. Sunny thought I'd been stacking up lines of sugar in the morning. Good? Yeah. It's the good stuff, all right. Straight out of southwestern New Zealand. Real hot pickle. <laughs> I told him we was going to need cold water. No, where's the water bottle? Hmm. 
It's a bit better for sunny, Jim. A glorious day. Better? Yeah, but it still does hurt my tongue a little bit. I think I burnt my tongue. Mate, your mullet's looking outstanding. So it turns out last night if we just had a stayed in camp and just looked at the mountains, we would have shot a deer. It's happened a couple of times over the years actually on our rod and rifle stag party trips or our rod and rifle trips. We've had the hunters all go off and go hunting and the pussies have just sat around <laughs> drinking beer by the fire. <laughs> and lo and behold, a deer's walked out right opposite camp. That's happened twice, probably more than twice. Twice that I can remember anyway. And fortunately the pussies have had a gun because they were gonna go hunting. Great plans and all that, but the bear interrupted the hunting and <laughs> it turns out they were the only ones who shot a bear. Boy, must be getting so hot sitting that close to the fire. Are you roasting or what? Look at that, there's a deer been running around right outside our camp while we were sleeping on the top of our footprints here. Cheeky bugger, come over while we were asleep, did a little bit of a dance outside our camp, then bug it off again. One of the good things about the Ozpig is that it's nice and compact. The cons far outweigh the pros, I've got to get another lightweight fire. Might try weld the lid on that actually and see if that helps, but it's still too heavy to be carting around doing this stuff. This Toha 2 is such a good engine. The old two banger. All right, we're going to boost up the river and see how far we can get up, maybe get some trout pulls. Matt, we must have taken the other channel on the way up. Well, Jim. We just fell out with underneath the boat. That was close. Man, look how dangerous this is, all that water pushing under that bank, it's running. Great, we'll get through there. found an old eel net, I'm going to see if we can score it on the side of the river here. Fire the carabiner to the paddle and see if we can hook it up. Mm. There is an eel still in here, he is super skinny. He's alive. Oh my god, he must have just been living in here, eating whatever he could get. He's alive, but he's so skinny. This thing must have been in here for years. There he goes. Man, he's hungry. I didn't cook breakfast today because I just bought porridge for breakfast and then the time I had my coffee and can't be bothered making porridge. We just hang out. Now we didn't even get to the closest shop till it was... Now what time is it now? Half past one. Still an hour and a half away from home. 
llevando en sí mi vida. Se fue, se fue. Dejando. Dejando mi alma rota. Skills. I don't think the lid's on tight. You might want to find the lid. Just leave that there and come check it tomorrow. It's in a bit of an eddy. I kind of wanted it in the current. I thought it was the current, but it's an eddy. No idea. It's the one the eels come up, hit that net, swim into the bloody opening, and they get trapped. So, Let's see if it works. Should do. Exciting. Now we caught one. We did catch one at least. Hmm. Well, at least we caught one. Just the one eel. Someone must have been in here eeling because I shot a deer on the other side of that river a few years ago and I chucked the guts in and there was about 150, 200 eels there was a massive ball of eels around the gut, so someone must have come and caught most of the eels in here, I guess. Still, we got one. Well, it's a good size. I don't know if I want to deal with an eel. Do you want to smoke him, or should we let him go and smoke him another time? Smoke him. Right then. It's not a massive, huge breeder, so we'll smoke him. We need a knife, bro. We need to run up and grab the bowie knife. The weight, pull the weight up. All right, nice, that's it. Yeah. Tip him out, buddy. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. You better wash him. Mission's successful. We'll go home, light a fire, and get all the slime off it, and then we'll prepare it for smoking. That's it, right down the bottom, right down the base, it'll cut us a big long one. Sweet as. All right, let's get this fire hushed up, and we'll get the slime off the eel. I hope it doesn't rain. Where's that one coming from? This way. So if we light it on this side, it'll be like the flame. He's always 50-50 with these punga leaves. Once they get going, they're good, but just trying to get them going is quite challenging. Oh, you got that flax, Sonny? We've got old mate Carl Skipper. He's coming to have a cup of tea, so he's put him to work. Bloody hell, I can't get it going. I'll get some dead cabbage tree. Yeah, not fun. This'll work. And we had to walk through all those bushes with the top things that we used as fire starters. Was it the dead grass? Oh, the toy toys. We got the fire humming, then my battery went flat in the GoPro and I had to run inside and change batteries. I got back out and it all burnt out, so now we need to build it up again. Three cars got the 
back up the sock there. You reckon I? Just in case you've tuned it at this one particular point, we're not burning the yellow light. We've already killed him, we're just de sliming him using fire to take the slime. Yep, she de slimed. Now we'll just give her a bit of a wash down, gut it, split it, and then we'll smoke it. And I don't actually have bloody smoker anymore. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> Small problem, smoke deal with no smoker. We're gonna to have to bloody build one. We'll just do it on the fire. Not that one though, because I burned a heap of plastic on it the other day. So, Sonny taking his pet eel for a walk. Hurry up, really slow. There's Nathan, aka Santa Claus. Dude, this eel is a beast. Imagine if your eel and you were trying to defeat this bird. Oh, oh there. Okay. Slice it towards its head, don't cut the side. Go any other way, it'll be easier. Oh, what's he been eating? Do you remember when we caught the eel down in Hokie? Some kind of fish skeleton. Must be a native fish. Look at that, little tiny skeletons. It always amazes me just how these things wriggle and squirm days after they're dead. You can put them in the fridge overnight, take them out the next day, sprinkle salt on them, and they'll still wriggle around. It's crazy. Just leave that sit in there overnight, get rid of some of the juice in the meat, dry it out a bit, smokes a bit better. Go, son! Oh, my battery's almost flat. I put the wrong battery in. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell, I put the flat battery on my GoPro and we're just about to go get some more seats for the kitchen. I've got my phone, I'll use that. Anyway, we dumped the, tra the boat off, dumped the boat off the trailer and Sonny's floated off down the lake. Keep going, you're almost there. So close, yet so far away. That's a uh, Remu, I think. <laughs> 